In this video, we're going to talk about configuring your Palo Alto to use security policies based off of App ID. Now, App ID is a way to be able to identify the various applications that are in use in your environment and then allow or deny based on those applications. Why you might want this is because if you have a Palo Alto or a traditional firewall connected up to the internet, you may have an internal client. Now, one of the common needs for a firewall is to allow DNS traffic to go through. Traditionally, DNS traffic runs on port 53. So if I go ahead and I create a firewall rule that allows port 53 to go through my firewall, then that means DNS traffic can go through out to the internet as well as anything else that's running on port 53. A lot of hackers know that port 53 is very open and very commonly uh, available in most organizations, and therefore they perform what's called command and control traffic or C2 traffic of infected machines inside the organization. When just simply port 53 is allowed to go out to the internet, this works perfectly for the hacker's point of view. In the Palo Alto, however, instead of saying port 53, they specifically specify an application called DNS. Now, DNS knows that the default port is 53, but there's also specific signatures to how DNS talks, how it communicates, and what their packets look like. Therefore, when it sees C2 traffic or a non-DNS traffic, it will block it while still allowing traditional DNS traffic to go through. So App ID is a great uh, feature that's built into the Palo Alto that gets you a little bit deeper into the packet uh, and ability to inspect the contents of those packets and then manipulate the way the traffic works in your environment based on the actual content of the applications or of the packets themselves. So let's see how this works. Here we have a fairly standard Palo Alto configuration. We have our uh, access the internet rule. Uh, source is our inside, destination is the outside. Uh, applications, services, actions, uh, basically everything is allowed out. Now maybe I want to be a little bit more specific as far as which applications are allowed out. As an example, uh, right here I have a ping a continuous ping going up to google.com and maybe I want to allow web browsing but I don't want to allow ping so I can come in and I can start specifying specific applications in order to do that I'm gonna go ahead and choose my egress or my my rule that gets me out to the internet and I'm gonna click on this application tab currently it's set to any application I'm gonna go ahead and say add and I'm gonna add in just some basic web browsing applications. So web-browsing is the first one. That's essentially HTTP, not all of HTTP, but for right now, that's good enough. And SSL, so that's HTTPS. And then since I'm here, I'm also gonna include DNS. Now the cool thing about this is I don't necessarily have to know very many specifics about web browsing, that this is ports, um, port 80, or about SSL, that this is port 443, or DNS, that this is 53, uh, TCP, and 53 UDP. I don't necessarily need to know that, I just need to know which applications I want to go through in my environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and commit. And while that's committing, we'll watch our ping, and our ping should die. Uh, specifically because we did not include ping in the list of applications. And there we go, now it starts timing out. So what we did was we just specified a subset of applications that should run through the environment. Uh, if we open up a web browser and we go to google.com, oops, if I type it incorrectly, or msn.com, 
there we go. Uh, we can see that web browsing is still working, but the other applications that we didn't include, such as ping, are not allowed in there. Now we can get a little bit more detail about these web applications, or about these applications. For instance, the web browsing, um, oops. And that is under the objects tab. And then on the left hand side here, we have applications. And we can see that it currently says there are 3,300 different applications available here. And they're all in this nice and wonderful list. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and filter this down. Actually, let's let's be a little bit more specific. Let's try ping. Let's see, ping. Uh, there are 67 different types of ping. There we go, there's one. That's the one we're looking for. And this gives us, uh, by clicking on the applications here, it shows us more details about ping, uh, specifically its name, if it utilizes any standard ports. Ping is ICMP, therefore it doesn't use ports. Um, tells us what, what type of vulnerabilities there are, what category it's in, subcategories, and so on. Uh, we can look at other applications. Let's look specifically at Google. Uh, sure, Google Class Calendar. That's Google Calendar Base. There we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, so we can see, hey, Google Calendar Base. There's a specific application called Google Calendar. This is the base or the, the basic configuration for Google Calendar. We can see, yes, this relies on TCP ports 80 and 443. It uses Google Base. Um, I'm sorry, it depends on Google Base to be there, which means you have to include it. Uh, it does not implicitly use anything, so you have to, there, there's nothing that's automatically included. And then what the default deny action is. So a lot of these policies are already defined for us, specific, and so we don't need to necessarily worry about them, especially things such as uh, what ports do we use? Well, doesn't matter. It takes care of it all for us. But the only thing you really have to worry about in this type of scenario is whether you've included all of the systems. Uh, for instance, uh, for instance, we only specified a couple of applications. We specified web browsing, we specified SSL, and we specified DNS. But as you can see, well, here's another application called Google, Google Calendar, and it has another application called Google Base. If we wanted to allow Google Calendar in our environment, we would have to include the Google Base application in our list, as well as the Google Calendar application. So you do have to be a little careful when you're rolling these out to make sure you're not accidentally excluding something else.